WNYC, and we're going to check in on Albany now. The end of the legislative session is less than three weeks away, end of June. So we'll find out soon what bills make it into law. To catch us up, I'm joined by Rachel Silberstein, state government reporter for the Gotham Gazette. Rachel, is the game to pass as many bills as they can in each chamber and then negotiate? The thing is, a lot of them, a lot of these bills, particularly surrounding electoral reform and ethics reform, they'll pass bills, but they will never be aligned with each other. So at the end of the session, nothing really is accomplished. Um, you know, the for example, the, the assembly passed a comprehensive. Uh, package of bills regarding electoral reform, including early voting and and automatic registration, and the Senate passed its own slew of bills, and and it was almost completely not aligned, except for something really minor, um, which allows inspectors to split election workdays into shifts. So that's sort of the hurdle, and and why it's so hard to get some of these things done. Rachel, you mentioned the electoral reforms bill. Who's against that? Why is it so hard for New York? Why do states like North Carolina have early voting and New York State doesn't? Well, Republicans in the Senate have done a calculation and realized that and have come to the conclusion that if more people vote, uh, they might lose the majority in the Senate because they at this point they're hanging on to a majority by a a sliver of a majority only because of an alliance because uh, Senator Sinclair who's a uh, Democrat is a li- uh, caucuses with them, um, and you know, which kind of leads us to the next topic, which is about how th- recently um, uh, Senate Democrats regained a numerical majority um, in the chamber, and now there's been sort of a lot of many calls from all different parts of the Democratic Party for Democrats to reunite, reunite, and take back the majority. Through the DNC, Democratic National Committee, Senator Gillibrand, on down to the Working Families Party. There was a joint statement, I believe, by all the Democrats in the New York House delegation uh, to reunite the party in the Senate. And even Senator Felder, who is sort of a a dino, a Democrat in name only, he's pretty conservative, votes with the Republicans on a lot of things. Even Senator Felder is calling on these uh, eight other independent Democrats to rejoin the party. Um, Why now, Rachel? We recently had a special election where they replaced uh, the seat of um, former Senator Bill Perkins was replaced by Brian Benjamin. So now they have that requisite 32 Democratic votes, if you count all the breakaway Democrats, to pass legislation. Um, And... uh, but leaders of, in the Democratic Party are saying, look at all this progressive legislation that we can't get passed, that gets held up by the legislature, by the, by the Republican-controlled Senate, that we could get passed if we just uh, united and, and you know, utilize those 32 votes that we and have. Rachel, how them. about state single payer? I understand the Assembly has passed a bill that would... Um, institute full single payer in New York. In other words, government single payer is the sole insurance company as the state in the state private insurance would be abolished in New York and the Senate was within a vote and maybe with this newly elected Democrat in uh, the special election for that open seat, maybe they even have a majority now in both houses if the Democrats actually reunite. What's going on with New York state single payer? So I think they have actually 30 co-sponsors on that bill in the Senate because Felder is not a co-sponsor. Um, and with the new... So Senator, that would leave them a little bit short. One short, exactly. And there ha- actually have been protests in Bay Ridge. Some some Democrats in Bay Ridge have been lobbying um, Senator Golden to be the, that 32nd vote. Which he's a it's, Republican. Uh, he's a Republican, exactly. The only Republican senator in Brooklyn... Um, so it's interesting that there, you know, there is a little bit of, of a clash going on there, um, even among, you know, Republicans uh, for for blocking this progressive legislation. Um, it is a little bit now. It seems like there's increased urgency when, when on the federal level, um, President Trump's administration is threatening to repeal and replace Obamacare, and which would have, you know, enormous repercussions for New York State. All right. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Rachel. I see you were named as one of City and State Magazine's 
40 under 40 rising stars yesterday. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you so much.